I'm going to be worried that we're not going to be quickly enough to take advantage of this window of opportunity for us to be, as nurse, for nursing, to be out in front and be able to look at this opportunity as a chance for us to be leaders and improving the health system. The market forces, or whatever you want to call them, that are out there, uh, we have to stay engaged with that. But if we're not part of that discussion, then it's going to pass us by. I think my history is right on this, that um, after World War II, that you know we have this other another crisis, but it's a crisis of shortage of nursing, and that was an opportunity. The hospitals could not find enough nurses, so they reinvented a professional level called the licensed practical nurse or whatever it was called them. And that that's what worries me, that we're not going to be on top of this enough, that we're shaping this, not to preserve nursing the way we know it, but to be part of the discussion that's going to keep us well positioned as leaders and trying to improve the health system and stuff. Thank you. Uh, Suzanne, you take a crack at that one? Sure. Uh, I would say it would still keep me awake at night, the economics. You have got to understand what's the business. Where are we with the business? Because we projected what the revenues will be like for us as an organization in five years, and the losses are staggering. So how do you survive as a business? provide quality care, and do all the things you want to do right. And then I think the other piece is, sort of on the other hand, uh, are we as nurses ready to take as many risks as I think we need to take with being innovative, uh, being willing to try different things, being willing to share or give away some of the things, but also being willing to empower others. Not with what's the essence of what nurses do, but being willing to rethink it or reimagine some of the practice. Thank you. Bobby? Well, I'm, I'm very optimistic. I think we've learned a lot in the struggle for scope, which is there's a band of practice that a lot of us share. And we've struggled for a long time to make that case, that we belong in a certain band of practice, as do many others. And I, I'm optimistic that we will be able to understand that when we turn to the rest of the professions. But let me tell you what I, I'm optimistic, but here's what I worry about. I'm worried about the cost of education. I think that as the, uh, the complexity increases, the technology increases, the management of systems increases, the, um, the clinical um, expectations and the clinical experiences increases, uh, we are faced with um, costs that, that students just can't and won't bear. So how do we assure that we have this fabulous workforce in the future uh, well, the same, I think the same, uh, really thinking about cost containment that the, that the practice environment, uh, we need to think about in education. David, thank you a lot. I'm thinking about, about the managed care revolution in the 90s and the way a lot of good things happened over over five, ten years and then we got to see and things went back. And there were, there were just too many forces who didn't want things to go the way they were going. And I'm worried that you have a lot of provider organizations right now maybe thinking, well, we could go this way. All the stuff we've talked about today, we could do that. That's a good model. And others saying, maybe the, the finance people saying, I don't know. Maybe we could consolidate with this other group and raise our prices and unbundle maternity care and get away from all of this stuff and go that other way. And I feel like if momentum, it, for a number of reasons, slows down. And if that kind of direction dominates, you could have just to unravel a lot of the good things. I would just simply say that uh, the Affordable Care Act is sort of a synthesis, a lot of other things have been happening, but it's a synthesis of a number of shifts. We're clearly shifting to team-based uh, care, we're shifting to an understanding of chronic illness, we're shifting the payment systems, the information technology is the genie that is uh, out, of, out uh, uh, open and is just going to give us a different set of circumstances. I think the thing two years from now the thing that I think we still haven't figured out is where patients fit in. Uh, I, I have a feeling uh, that uh, we are still essentially thinking about a model of how can they figure out how to play our game. Uh, and I think that we're going to start to see a little bit more uh, that they're going to tell us how they intend to approach this. Now that isn't good or bad. 
It simply said, it's a change.